Okay, so I want to show you a little more of the, the power of the algebra and geometry combined in GeoGebra. Let's compute a unit circle. Let's construct a unit circle. And honestly, I'm kind of building this as we go. I might think about the features I'm going to add to it. I haven't planned ahead, so bear with me. But let's, let's make a unit circle. So the unit circle itself, I could use the parametric function cosine t sine t, or I could just make a circle starts at 0, 0 and goes to one of the points that are 1 away. I'll go to 0, 1 there, point B. Okay, I'm going to hide the point B because I don't want my circle to resize. I'm going to hide both of those points. And let's zoom in a few times. And let's drag closer to the center. So there we have a unit circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Oh, I almost forgot that GeoGebra actually can plot implicit functions. So let me actually delete that and reconstruct it that way. I'm going to delete all of these things. Of course the circle depended on the point so it deleted. Yeah I can actually just plot x squared plus y squared equals 1. I don't have to explicitly solve for y. That's called an implicit function, which is kind of difficult to write a program to do, but GeoGebra can do it. Okay, Let's make a slider for a point that will go around the circle. Okay. So let's click the slider tool. Let's call this thing t if it'll let me. I don't think that's protected and let's make it go from 0 to 2 pi. I've got my calculator here with me. I'm going to get 2 pi to many decimal places. So we've got 6.283185. I'll go to that far. In the increment, I'm going to divide that by 24 since 24, 4, and 6, and 3 all are common angles to divide into it. And I get 0 0.261799. So I have a slider that will go around. Oops. I always forget. Before I use that slider, click on the pointer tool. I should be able to get things like pi over 2 and pi 3.14 should be there. I think we can show more, more digits if we look at the properties. Maybe it's not in the direct properties. Maybe it's a property of the entire operation. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. Under rounding, I can increase the number of digits. Let's use about four. So we can see to four digits we're accurate to pi there. Oh, anyway, let's put a point on now. Let's let the point be cosine of t. So to plot points, you just, like in parentheses, put the x and the y coordinates. But I want these coordinates to be cosine of t, sine of t. So we have the point that's at pi. So we can go from 0 to pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, all the way around to 2 pi, and several interesting points in between. There's pi over 4. So we have the unit circle, and we have a point that goes around. Let's label object properties. Let's use a caption. We'll have it show the caption, and let the caption be cosine of t, sine t. So now we know that that point's coordinates are cosine of t, sine of t. And over here we can look and see what those are. Cosine of 1.309 should be, in radians, should be 0.2588. The sine value is 0.9659. Let's go up to, to 1 on the axis there. So that's pi over 2, rounded off to four decimal places. Its cosine value is 0, its sine value is 1. 
we could be more explicit over here on the side if we want. We could compute cosine of t and sine of t. We could label those. We can't use a caption on it or anything. You can put a caption in, but it won't show up. I'm not even exactly sure why that's there. Because it doesn't show up anywhere because it's not a point on the picture. But And you can't show it. I'm clicking. You can't make this show because it's just a computation. But what I can do, let's name it. I can't name it cosine of t. Watch, I'll try an error. It won't let me do that because that's an input command. But let's just name it cosine. I'll spell it out. And then this one, let's name it sine. Let's color code some things. point blue. Let's make these. I think I can change their, their colors. So there we have the point which helps me find sine and cosine of t. We could also add the triangle. If I add the point cosine of t comma zero I'll get the projection on the axis don't really need that label. Let's hide the label. And let's put the origin on. Oops. Let's hide that label. And now I can make a triangle. Which has as its sides. We have, of course, we have its area. I don't really care about its area, but side A, what it's calling side A, should match cosine, at least in absolute value when we go into the other quadrants. Those lengths are always going to be positive. A and C1 and B are always going to be positive. I don't like that it's named this C1. There's no other C in the picture. There's no reason I can't call that C. Of course, I might want to match the Pythagorean theorem instead. Here's A. Don't believe I can name two things B. I can't do that. Let's give this a temporary name. Let's call it D for a minute. Let's call this side C. this side back at B and mm. just because the Pythagorean theorem is kind of nice to have ABC for the sides there. So now we have a picture. What good is this picture? Let's go back to zero. It shows us whatever T is. It'll construct the triangle that's used to compute the trig values. We can see that A is equal to 0.5. That's the X coordinate of our point and that's the cosine value. We can see that B is 0.866, square root of 3 over 2. And that's the Y coordinate of our point, and that's the sine value. If we go over into another quadrant, the coordinate of the points will change to where the X is negative. The sides of the triangle are still positive, of course, but when we define cosine, we define it to be negative because the X coordinate is negative in that point. So we have a nice little unit circle here that demonstrates the trig values. What about tangent? Tangent doesn't show up in this picture. It's sine over cosine. We could compute that. Let's call it tangent equals sine of t divided by cosine of t. I think it'll let me use the word tangent. There we go. And it's 1 because right now I'm at pi over 4 where tangent sine and cosine are both square root of 2 over 2. How does that relate to the picture? Well, it's also the slope of this thing. I've actually never used this tool before, but I think I can do slope of the line segment, but we'll call that thing C. And let's see what that did. So 
could put this triangle up here to show the slope is one, but I don't particularly care for having that on my picture. Let's see, where did that show up over here? What it's named that D, right? Let's hide the object. But we've got the measurement there. And we see that that slope matches the tangent. No matter where we go, the slope's negative one, the tangent's negative one. We go to say to here, the slope's point five seven seven three, tangent's point five seven seven three, which is square root of three over three, right? Check that. I'm guessing that's the square root of 3 command, and it is. There, put it up here at E. Square root of 3 over 3 with round off error. Of course, it took my command and turned it into a numbers. So take that away. I told you to bear with me. I'm just playing around trying a few things. So there is our picture. So hopefully by some of these demonstrations you see that GeoGebra can do a lot of the things that GSP can do. I think in a lot of ways it can do a lot more the way it combines the algebraic representations. So I think it's really pretty neat. I can even, I'm going to completely mess this thing up by dragging that circle. But look and see what it did. I've shifted this thing and it's shifted the equation to the, to the new center of the circle. So I could study the equation of the center of a circle. It's dynamically updating it. See, I can probably never get it right back on. I think I can actually go in and type it though. I just double clicked on it. Boom, set it back to where I wanted it. So it's really neat the way it combines the algebra and the geometry so that we can explore these things and how they relate. And of course, that's what they want us to do these days in the integrated curriculum. With math 1, math 2, math 3, you want to combine these things together. And I think GeoGebra is a really great tool, and it's free.